Welcome to the third video in a series of videos on configuring Kerberos authentication for Access Manager. In this third video, I'm going to be covering the configuration of the clients. This means your browsers. Specifically, I'm going to be covering Internet Explorer, um, and it also does Edge in Windows 10, and Firefox. Uh, first thing, as you can see in the documentation here, it says that uh, you want to add your computers of the users to the Active Directory no domain. This typically happens when you join the domain. Uh, let's go over here to my Active Directory server into users and computers and computers. Here we go. This is my test workstation. Uh, this appeared here after I joined that test workstation to my Active Directory domain. So this needs to be here. And then after that, all we need to do is go into. Let's go to the workstation. First, let's do uh, Internet Explorer or Edge in Windows 10. Uh, since I'm in Windows 10, I'm just going to go to Control Panel to my Internet Options. And what we want to do is go to the Security tab, Local Intranet, and Sites, and then go to Advanced. In here, as you can see, I've already added um, but this right here, there's the base URL for my identity server right there, the idp.jw4.com. Um, so you add yours in there, and then you can just apply all that out. And then go over here to Advanced and just verify that you have Enable Integrated Windows Authentication right here. Uh, by default, that's enabled these days, but if yours isn't, Make sure it's enabled, um, and you'll need to restart the browser after that. For IE and Edge, that's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, for Firefox, and we need to go into the About Config section. Search for Network.n, and this is the setting here that we're specifically looking for is the uh, auth trusted URIs. And as you can see, I've already added several here. Um, here's my base URL right here of my IDP server. And as far as Firefox is concerned, um, that's it. Uh, just a, a mention of note up here, this setting in here for auth delegation this is uh, another topic when you're using constrained delegation through your access gateway so in this particular situation where you're just doing straight up kerberos through the identity server you don't need to bother with this uh, once we have those configured uh, the next thing to do is to test our kerberos um, let's go over here to my administration console to our access gateway configuration so that we can assign the Kerberos contract to a resource. I'm going to create a new protected resource and I'm just going to call it Kerberos. And the contract that I want to assign to it is my Kerberos contract. My path is going to be on my web server is Kerberos. All right, and then I'm going to go through and apply that change to my configuration. And that'll take a few moments. And then uh, once that's all done and it's updated, uh, we'll try logging in. All right, so now that we have our configuration updated, let's go and test and see if Kerberos works on that resource we created. So let's go over here to my workstation. We'll try Edge first. And let's enter in. There we go. And there you go. Kerberos works. No prompt for authentication whatsoever. Uh, same thing over here with Firefox. And I hope it wants to 
certificate problems there because it's all self-signed stuff. All right, and there you go. So same thing there. So I uh, hope that helped a little bit. It's a brief overview on how to configure those clients. Um, one thing to note is if you have users who are outside of your firewall, they can't use Kerberos. Um, and the Spango protocol defaults first to NTLM, and then it'll supposed to default to basic authentication. Now, Access Manager doesn't support NTLM, so you'll get a failure there. Um, on older versions of NAM, you would just get uh, a, the basic pop-up. In 4.3, it's changed and you get thrown to a page with a kind of a, a dead form on it. Um, in video number four, my next video, I'm gonna talk about setting up the fallback for Kerberos so that that doesn't happen, and you'll actually get sent to uh, the authentication method of your choice. So users who are outside your firewall or users who don't have a Kerberos token will get prompted to authenticate another way. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.